Donald Trump has frequently dismissed the focus on Russian hacking as sour grape by Democrats, but U.S. Intel says Russia favored him during his primary campaign against other Republicans as well. And some new windows are opening into how that might have worked. An aide to the Republican who came in second to Trump, Ted Cruz, has begun speaking out about suspicious online attacks he faced during the primaries, including an odd pattern where he faced online attacks whenever he talked about Trump on air, but not when he talked about other GOP rivals like Rubio or Bush. Now, Bob Mueller's team is, of course, investigating whether Russia simply helped Trump on its own initiative or if he engaged in a criminal conspiracy to get their help, like making a deal or asking for it. I will tell you this. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. That cruise campaign aide, Ron Nehring, joins me right now exclusively on the beat. Uh, Ron, thanks for being here. Uh, first, just on the facts, walk us through what would happen during the primary, you say, when you would speak specifically about Trump. Yeah, so um, my role during the campaign was to come on programs like this, on uh, this network and others, uh, talk about our campaign, and then, you know, very often this would get very tough uh, against our Republican opponents in the primary. And uh, and if if, uh, if we were getting tough with uh, John Kasich or candidate Marco Rubio, you know, I would step off the air, pick up my phone, take a look at my Twitter feed, see what type of response we were getting. And there'd be almost no response when any candidate other than the candidate Donald Trump, uh, you know, was being mentioned. Uh, but when it did come to, you know, those times when we got, you know, it got really tough both ways. You, you showed some clips of that earlier. Sure. Uh, then I would step off the air and all of a sudden, boom, you would see hundreds of, uh, of tweets, you know, that were in my feed, all tagging me individually. Uh, and this would happen with other people on the campaign as well. But then when you, so it was very odd, the, the, the level of reaction that you would see in those cases. But then if you took a look at the individual Twitter accounts that were responsible for generating those messages, you would see a suspicion pattern and that is that those accounts very often the profile picture would not be of a human being it would be of a flag or a background or something like that uh, you would notice um, uh, certain buzzwords that were all in the profile uh, description of the account there was no geographic location listed you know for uh, for where that account was based uh, the uh, the background picture was not specific to uh, to any type of individual so during the primary this is happening to you what did yep. you think at the time you thought these were hacks or trolls, fake supporters, but what did you think? Well, first, it was it was clear that it was disproportionate. It would only happen when we were when we were going up against one uh, one candidate, uh, and then um, uh, you know it was only we weren't in a position to be able to ascribe this to any one particular source, but it was certainly suspicious and different, nothing that I'd seen before. And then one other thing that uh, I think is important is that this type of hysterical language that was being used, always very much over the top, mm -hmm. very much out of the ordinary for your typical conservative uh, activist. And I think that. The, and the language very often, by the way, was not very good English. Uh, it was uh, very often written. It almost sounded as though this is a non-native English wow. speaker who was trying to speak in ways uh, that they think uh, Americans speak. So uh, when did you first start to make that connection? You just said that this attack and these online messages, some of them seem like they might be coming from foreigners or non-native speakers. And a fusillade more so than any other person you'd mentioned in any other campaign. So was it during or after the end of the, the primary that you started thinking about this connecting to Russia? Well, it, it, only after the primaries were over did it uh, did it become apparent that uh, that you had Russian uh, intelligence services and the like, uh, uh, the FSB and the GRU uh, engaged in the activities which we all now know that they were engaged in. But d back during the primary, before then, it, it, we weren't able to attribute that to anyone. All we knew was that uh, there was this bot-like activity that that took place. We didn't know where it was coming from. There were certainly uh, patterns to it, uh, and you know this came out because. Because earlier in the week at the Heritage Foundation, the Heritage Foundation hosted an event discussing Russian propaganda and disinformation activity featuring, featuring four Eastern European experts. And I was just in the audience and raised my hand and asked a question and kind right. of told a little bit of this story. Right. Uh, and uh, they were quick to point out that this type of activity, number one, is common for what the Russians engage in in Eastern Europe and in countries along their border, especially in Ukraine, Poland, right. and, and elsewhere. Let me ask and you this, just because we're yeah. almost out of time, though. 
Do sure. you think that the special counsel and the Senate investigators should also look at this conduct during the primary? Well, I think we want to know the totality of what uh, of what the Russians or anyone else uh, w were engaged in, and I think that the, certainly the congressional committees have to be allowed to, to to run this down completely, so that the American people have a clear understanding that the next time you go online, you know, we want to be a little more careful before we share an article that sounds just a little too, you know, absurd, or start sharing uh, conspiracy theories that are being cooked up, you know, not in Nebraska but uh, at an office park in Saint we Petersburg hear, we hear, or in yeah, Moscow. Yeah, we hear so much about the general election. You, you're saying the investigators should look at the GOP primary. Uh, I think the entire election cycle should be uh, should be fair game to look at absolutely. It, it's fascinating and some of this stuff like so much of our reporting and analysis makes more sense as time goes on. Uh, Mr. Nearing, I've talked to you before but never about a story quite like this. I appreciate you joining me. You hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.